This week, we got a really great question from somebody in our learning community asking about heart rate variability and the vagus nerve and how we can really look at ways of improving heart rate variability. So to start with, it's helpful to look at what we're actually assessing when we look at heart rate variability, because we hear a lot about how high heart rate variability is a good thing and low heart rate variability is associated with some things that can impact both our psychological as well as our physical health. Now, the heart doesn't beat like a metronome. It doesn't beat in a steady single pace like this. When we breathe in, our heart actually beats faster. And that's because the vagus nerves influence coming down onto our heart's sinoatrial node is dampened. So this runs from the brainstem down to that part, which is the heart's pacemaker. And it has a dampening effect. And it evolved in what's thought to help us be able to connect and work collaboratively with other people. So when we breathe in, we have this release of the vagus nerve on our heart that lets mobilizing energy in. And when we breathe out, it re-engages. And it's a little bit like riding a bicycle down a hill where you would keep a little bit of your fingers on the brake just so you don't go too fast. Well, that's what the vagus nerve is doing to us, the vagal brake particularly. So we breathe in, our heart beats faster. We breathe out, the heart slows down. And if we assess that, we can see if we've got the vagus nerve working well or if we've got high or low vagal tone. And as we said, this can give us an indication between how our physical health is and also how our psychological health is as well. But what's more important here is really how our vagal break works in challenging situations. So let's say you needed to give a presentation at work and it's something that you were really challenged to do. Ideally, the vagal break would release from your heart's pacemaker. And this would increase mobilizing energy throughout your nervous system. Now, it wouldn't come off completely. So if we think of that bike riding downhill, the brake is still engaged, but it's just relaxed a little bit and we can go faster. That mobilizing energy gives us focus. It helps us to concentrate. It gives us endurance. It gives us the passion to put forward what it is that we want to say with strength, agency and conviction. It's a really good thing. And having this flexibility of our nervous system where we can move into states like this, that's what allows peak performance. That's what allows us to do our best work. And it's actually a blend of two states. So it's the regulating state of our nervous system known as the ventral vagal state combined with the sympathetic nervous system state. Now, we hear so much around the sympathetic nervous system being bad, that fight or flight's bad. It's something we need to learn to calm down out of. But really, this state brings so much to us in terms of passion, vitality and well-being. It's not something we want to get rid of. What can happen, though, is following periods of chronic and traumatic stress, we may find that we have low vagal tone. And so it's a little bit like that the brake on the bicycle is already off a little bit. And then when we go to meet these challenging situations, rather than just relaxing a little bit, the brake comes off altogether and it's like we're riding downhill too fast. So we end up with anxiety, agitation, getting worked up. We might be angry. We might find ourselves reacting in ways that we don't like. And so it's important for us to improve our vagal efficiency so that we're matching with our nervous system what's actually happening in our outside world. And that means we're going to perform at our best or match the circumstance with the level of activation we need in our nervous system. Now, this is something we can learn to do. And I invite you to think about What is a challenge that you can step into that will bring in some of this mobilizing energy and it will require you 
to take off some of that vagal break, but you can do it in a way where you're not going to move into fight or flight. So this stretch zone of the nervous system, if you like. Now, we hear a lot about how breathing helps heart rate variability, and there's some good science to show that, but some other effective things are focus. So yes, focus has been found when we're focusing on something to help us improve our heart rate variability, and it's a way we can train our vagus nerve. So my invitation to you is to lean into something that you can try that's challenging that requires focus, that will stretch your nervous system, release the vagal break a little bit, but it won't push you up into fight or flight. And I'd invite you to share in the comments what it is that you're going to give a try because I'd love to hear from you.